Okay, good, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome back for another Particle Physics for Kids Virtual Science Camp. This is the, the second one in this year's series. And I'm really happy to, to be having an introduction to uh, JNR with uh, Nikolai Anfimov, who's the head of the Experimental Methods uh, Lab of Particle Physics um, at, the, at the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. Um, it'll be great to have this introduction to tell uh, everyone a little bit more about how it's organized with their labs and the different uh, excellent work going on there. And there'll be a number of other lectures coming up in March from the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research and visits happening in May. Um, so this is great to set the stage and have a general idea of everything that's uh, going on. So I'm really happy to, to have you here for this lecture. Uh, thank you again for joining us and turning things over to you now. Thank you for such great introduction. So, and a uh, good time of the day to, to, to all of uh, students, listeners. Uh, my name is uh, Nikolai Anfimov. Today, I'm going to give a very brief overview of some studies which are held in our institute, a joint institute for nuclear research. What I will show you is a quite small number of all activities at JNR. But uh, from my perspective, they're the most interesting for broad listeners. Okay. So first, uh, I would like to, uh, to start from the place where Jenner is located. It is Dubna in Moscow region uh, in the Russian Federation. From my point of view as an habitant, uh, it is very nice place to live. It is surrounded by water from all sides. Uh, Volga River, uh, one of the main uh, Russian rivers. Uh, Dubna and Sestra rivers and uh, Moscow Channel, which deliver, uh, delivers uh, water to Moscow. We have uh, modern infrastructure, including uh, Dubna State University and uh, many places of interest uh, like sports, uh, recreation. <laughs> Briefly speaking, there are all needs for good living. Uh, but uh, of course, the acknowledgement of the city is given by the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research, where many breakthrough discoveries uh, were made. If you look at the periodic table, you may notice that 105th element uh, named after Dubna, uh, which, is, which is Dubnium. Another important discovery uh, is a neutrino oscillation hypothesis, which was made in 1957 uh, and uh, we also discovered new particles and made many other uh, important things. Uh, okay, so Jenner is a very large institution. It's an international intergovernmental organization like uh, CERN. We have a staff of more than 5,000 people, uh, of which almost 1,200 uh, scientists and uh, 2,000 engineers. The institute uh, consists of seven laboratories, each of them as large as a conventional uh, institute. For instance, uh, my laboratory, Laboratory of Nuclear Problems, has almost uh, 700 employees. We publish uh, comparable with certain amount of articles, collaborate with a thousand of scientific centers in uh, 74 countries. Oh. Okay, now we come up to physics. First, I would like to talk about research in the field of matter structure. As you know, all matter consists, uh, consists of uh, atoms. Atoms uh, consist of nuclei uh, uh, and of electrons surrounding them. Nuclei are a composition of uh, protons and neutrons, which we call uh, nucleons. And nucleons are made of uh, quarks bound by uh, strong force by means of gluons. And uh, <laughs> naive listener may wonder what we can study else. Uh, it's, it's already obvious, right? Uh, as an example, uh, this was the nucleon structure in 1980s. And now we have realized that the structure is more complex. Uh, it is uh, now we know that there is a sea of virtual quarks and gluons, 
and to study it more certain, we need to ramp up energy and look more deeply into a structure, we may realize how things were working in the beginning. And in the beginning was the Big Bang. I'm sure you all uh, saw this nice TV show, but today we're going to speak about this Big Bang. Uh, the theory says that everything was shrunk into a point and then exploded. First, uh, the forces separated and then matter separated from radiation. And later on, the expansion cooled down the matter and it started to form objects, objects like uh, uh, stars and galaxies. Here, I would like to draw your attention to what scientists think. There was an epoch where uh, the matter was so hot and dense, and dense that uh, quarks and gluons were united in a substance named quark gluon plasma. And here at Jenner, we are planning to study this form of matter to understand better how the universe was working uh, in the beginning, how we can prepare the plasma. Uh, we simply need to take quarks and gluons and collide them together, where we can take many of them by colliding heavy nuclei. Okay. Um, this is Dubna from a bird eye view. Uh, in the forest out of the city, we have one of Jenner sites where we will build a new collider facility named Nika on the base of the existing accelerator Nucleotron. Uh, this facility we will collide ions of gold and by detecting secondary particles may reconstruct reactions and study the uh, quark, quark gluon plasma. Okay. So um, the idea is to spill beam in two opposite directions. And by using magnets uh, uh, to toward them and hence collide at uh, these two points. As I said, the main uh, program uh, is to study quark gluon plasma, uh, phase transition in this state. But I would like to, uh, to step a part of it uh, because many ordinary people, my friends, not scientists, are curious about uh, what, what is the profit from all this, all this science for them, um, for industry, for economy. So here I would like to point out uh, that uh, as a byproduct, in, in, in a good sense, we have a development of applications. By using Nika accelerator beam, we can make research on uh, materials, nanotechnology, medicine, biology, electronics, nuclear power, safety, cryogenics, and many other things, and space programs. As you will know, uh, people dream to travel on Mars. And one obstacle to get in there is radiation in space. Of course, there are many technical challenges and uh, I'm sure you, you follow what Elon Musk is doing, but the radiation is also, also a challenge. Using heavy ions, uh, we can model space radiation environment. Our uh, radio bio biologists uh, irradiate mice or cells and develop different medicals uh, to, to recover them. Um, the Nika complex is building now. And uh, I would like to show you uh, the progress. In 2016, they laid the first stone. Then our former uh, prime minister, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, signed the decree and approved money. Uh, a year later, we built the factory for the production of uh, superconducting magnets, which are the key component of any, any modern accelerator. Uh, and on the right, uh, you can see the, the collider construction in 2018. Uh, this, this is what we have now. Most of the complex was built and uh, the beam is circulating now. I hope pretty soon detectors will be ready and we can start our, our program. Okay, now we are approach uh, the topic which made Dubna so famous. It's the synthesis of super heavy elements. You know that the 
heaviest element that is found on Earth is uranium, uh, number uh, number ninety two. It is because it has a half time, a half lifetime uh, comparable with the age of the Earth. Once the first nuclear reaction was made, scientists realized that this could be used for the production of new elements, and they wondered, can we use uh, can we produce elements uh, heavier than uranium? Yes, we can. What is the heaviest element in nature? Is there the end of the periodic table? Now we managed to produce elements up to 118. But uh, all these uh, heavy elements leave a fraction of a second. What is the sense to produce them then? <laughs> Some theories uh, that describe properties of nuclei predict the existence of the stability island, the area on the isotope map uh, where nuclei have the symmetry that drives their long life. Uh, therefore, uh, we may produce a, a unique substance with, uh, which can live uh, seconds, minutes, hours, or maybe days. Who knows? Uh, 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 and I want to point out that uh, 10 elements were discovered in Dubna, and four of them are eponyms of names uh, relative to JNR. These are Dubnium. The element was formally named uh, Dubnium in 1997, after the town of Dubna, uh, where JNR is located. Uh, fluorovium, the element was discovered in 1998. Uh, the name of the laboratory in turn honors the Russian physicist uh, Georgi uh, Fluorov. And uh, Moscovium, it was uh, first uh, synthesized in, 2000, uh, in uh, 2003 by a joint team of Russian and uh, American scientists uh, at the JNR in Dubna. Uh, in December uh, 2015, it was officially named after uh, Moscow Oblast, uh, the Moscow region in which the, uh, our institute is situated. And the uh, 118th element, Aganison, uh, it was first synthesized in 2002, and the name honors the uh, nuclear physicist uh, Yuri Aganisian, who played a leading role uh, in the discovery of heaviest element in, in the periodic table. And here I would like to point out one item on why making science is so cool. Uh, people in many fields can get medals, honors, but all these are uh, temporary things. I'm sure in a couple of years, no one even remember who was <laughs> Dmitry Medvedev and what was the, the medal uh, given to academician uh, Yuri Aganisian. But uh, his name is in the periodic table forever. And billions of school students like you can see the element named after him. Okay, how we will make uh, new heavy elements? To supply this research, uh, we have built the Super Heavy Elements Factory on the base of a new powerful cyclotron DC-280, which has an intensity in order higher than a previous one. This powerful accelerator will help to produce uh, 119, 120 and heavier elements. Uh, and to uh, probably probe uh, the stability island. But here again, I would like to step aside and mention that uh, this science can, what, what this can science do for, for ordinary people. You can see a uh, nano lab as a part of the, of the factory. What we can do else with ion accelerators? As you know, polymers, are uh, resistant to etching. And, uh, but once uh, a long polymer chain is destroyed, it is no longer resistant. Ions can locally 
unbind uh, a polymer chain, and hence, uh, which hence may be, may be etched. After etching, we obtain the small pores of a few nanometers in diameter. This pored uh, membrane can be used to filter uh, water, blood plasma, and, and other uh, liquids. Uh, as, as for the space program, <laughs> there are challenges uh, for electronics also. Accelerated ions can model uh, the space environments for, for chips. Using them, we can test the radiation hardness of any integrated circuit and develop a technology to make it harder. For instance, we can make redundant circuits inside the chip. Okay, now we come up to another particle. Uh, what is a neutrino? I would like to start with a brief uh, history. As you will know, there are three types of uh, ionizing rays, alpha, beta, beta, and gamma. Alpha particles are nuclei of helium. Beta are electrons and gamma are electromagnetic irradiation. Um, similar to, to atoms, nuclei have strictly determined energy levels inside it. The, and the emission of particle is, uh, is a two-body two -body decay, two-body task. Because we have a nucleus and the particle, followed to the momentum and energy conservation laws, the particle should take out the most amount of energy and a certain amount. If you look at the energy spectra for alpha and gamma rays, you can see discrete lines but uh, that, that proved this statement. But for beta rays, we can see a continuous spectrum. Scientists even wonder it, what with the energy, energy conservation law at the microscopic level. Does the energy conserve? So Wolfgang Pauli was an outstanding scientist. He came up with a brilliant idea. What if along with the electron, something neutral and weak interacting is emitted. So weak that we cannot detect it. Then the common energy is distributed between these two particles. Then electron energy depends on a scattering angle and hence uh, be of any value. Uh, this particle was named neutron. Later on, Chadwick discovered uh, neutral rays in uh, nuclear decays, but they have uh, strong interaction and hence are not, not, the, uh, not Pauli neutrons. This Pauli particle was renamed neutrino, which, is, uh, which in Italian means uh, small, uh, small neutron. Uh, in 1956, uh, two American scientists, uh, Ryan and Cohen, discovered neutrino. It became possible since the nuclear reactor was constructed. Uh, many antineutrinos, now we know that they are antineutrinos, are produced in nuclear decays. And in the reactor, we have an enormous amount of, of them and hence a huge neutrino flux. Uh, but this is not the end of the story. Scientists uh, realized that the sun is a huge thermonuclear reactor that produces an enormous amount of neutrinos hitting our planet. We built a detector uh, that can detect some neutrinos, which are electron, uh, electron neutrinos. At that moment, we knew that there is another type, uh, muon neutrino, which was discovered in atmospheric rays. And now we know that there is a third type, Tau neutrino. So we built a detector that can detect some neutrinos, which are, as I said, electron neutrinos, and see what, and see that we detected just, uh, just a fraction of one third of, of the calculated flux. And here we got stuck with an, another obstacle. What's happened? Why do we detect just a fraction of, of the common flux? Did we miscalculate something? Uh, maybe something is violating again? Fortunately, 
a decade ago, a Soviet, uh, Soviet scientist uh, who was working in our laboratory, laboratory of uh, nuclear problems, uh, Bruno Pontecorvo, he has Italian origin. He assumed that uh, neutrino can change its type by traveling even in space, in free space. And this could explain this, the sun neutrino problem. Neutrino oscillations uh, were discovered at the end of the 90s. And uh, unfortunately, Bruno Pontecorvo did not live up uh, to this moment and passed away in 1993. Uh, for this discovery, uh, the Nobel Prize was given in uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, what, what, what is the practical outcome of neutrino physics? Uh, since neutrino is one of the particles that take part in thermonuclear reactions, the sun would not shine without uh, neutrinos and we would not exist at all. Now neutrinos are used as uh, a probe uh, to discover processes happening far away deep into the universe, uh, in black holes or, and supernovas. They can shed the light on physics uh, beyond the standard model which is the main uh, particle theory at the moment. But could, uh, could anything be, be more practi practical? Uh, for instance, we can uh, use them to, to monitor nuclear reactors at, uh, at far, distance, uh, far distances. And uh, the most uh, curious uh, from, uh, from my uh, perspective, uh, we can make a tomography of our planet. They interact so weakly that they easily pass through the sun, even through the sun. So the Earth is almost uh, transparent for neutrinos and hence be, and hence be scanned. Uh, the mean free path in water for neutrinos is six, uh, six times uh, 10 to the 18th meters, which is almost 60 light years. Uh, so which is a half of a billion suns put, put in a row. Uh, so how, how we can detect them? Uh, the first is uh, we, we have to provide an astronomical uh, amount of neutrinos. Let's say uh, 10 to the 18th, and hence we can detect them in a volume of a size of a cubic meter. Or we need to build detectors of enormous size. Uh, the Baikal Lake is a very good natural detector. Once a neutrino interacts with a molecule of water, it produces a charged particle, muon, for instance, that can have enough energy traveling faster than, than the speed of light uh, in water. And uh, you had it right, faster than the speed of, of light in water where light travels slower by 25% uh, uh, than in vacuum, this is possible. And uh, once a charged particle uh, exceeds this threshold, it produces light, uh, so-called sharing of light. The light uh, turned into a cone and hence uh, has, has a direction. So it's directed in, in, in the cone. And the amount of light is uh, proportional to propagation length and hence, uh, hence uh, the energy of, uh, of this particle. Two, by detecting this light, we can measure direction and the energy of neutrino. Uh, to, to detect the light, we use large photosensors, photomultiplier tubes. We put them on strings and dive them deep into water to detect uh, particles we are aiming to cover almost uh, one cubic kilometer with the phototubes, which is an enormous amount. Uh, Jenner has quite a broad neutrino program. We collaborate with uh, institutes for neutrino experiments all over the world. And we have many home experiments in Russia. I personally work on three experiments, NOAA, Dune, uh, which are, so NOAA is held and Dune will be held uh, in the United States and Dune uh, will be held in China. 
For the Dune experiment, we developed uh, the light redout system in liquid argon. And for Dune experiment, we testing large of uh, 20 inches uh, or 50 centimeters large photocathode uh, photomultiplier tubes. Okay, another particle, which is, I believe uh, you are much more aware of, of these particles, uh, neutrons. All nuclei consist of protons and neutrons, but protein, which is a hydrogen one uh, nucleus. Neutron is the agent of, uh, of nuclear chain reaction. Uh, so um, we can use it uh, for nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. Because of its uh, neutrality, it can penetrate deep into matter. And this is used for, uh, for scanning large uh, objects. Of course, uh, not as large as, as Earth or stars. Um, it's just out of the size of, 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 of a few meters. As you know, all quantum objects uh, have wave and particle properties. Conditionally, we divide neutrons by, uh, by their energy as fast and thermal or, or cold. Fast neutrons work as particles and uh, thermal demonstrate wave properties. Uh, we can use these uh, neutrons to, uh, for, for, for fast uh, neutrons, uh, they, they have significant scattering uh, on protons because of, of, of a similar mass. So mass of neutron is almost uh, the same as uh, proton mass. So we can use these uh, neutrons to treat people or as, as a weapon. And neutrons uh, significantly interact with, uh, with our bodies. As, as treatment, we can irradiate cancer tumors and hence, uh, hence kill them. Uh, we can use them to search for water, which is uh, protons and oxygen in exotic places like uh, the moon or Mars, or search for oil since it's uh, a carbohydrate or an, an organic substance. By using wave properties of uh, thermal neutrons, we can study matter structure as uh, semiconductors, biopolymers, or lithium batteries. Uh, in our institute, we have an apparatus that uh, produces neutrons, a uh, pulsed reactor on fast, fast neutrons. This, okay, so it's going very slow. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is reactor vessel and uh, this is an active zone. It is, uh, consists of uh, fuel assemblies that consist of uh, fuel rods. And these fuel rods uh, consist of uh, fuel pellets uh, on, based on plutonium dioxide. And to shrink uh, the active zone, we add a fast fission substance based on californium that produces a lot of neutrons. Uh, to make uh, the active zone small, we surround it, it with uh, stationary reflectors. And two can have a critical parameter close uh, to, to the unit. Then we have two rotational refle reflectors. When they overlap, the critical parameter is above the unit and a chain reaction occurs. In the case of the stationary position of the moving re uh, reflectors, we can have an explosion. But they go, go down and break up the chain reaction. And the pulse of fast neutrons is produced and coming out. And then we guide these uh, pulses uh, to, to a different areas. This is shown here. When they overlap a critical parameter above the unit, chain reaction occurs. And once they go down, a pulse neutron going out. And we guide it through, uh, through the neutron guides to a different areas uh, where we are doing uh, studies with, with neutrons.
Uh, we have a quite broad research program uh, with neutrons, but here I would like to mention uh, the applications. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, fast neutrons are most sensitive to organic substance, substances. X-rays or gamma quanta scattering uh, depends on the atomic number. So if you make a snapshot of, of, of an object, as presented here, uh, the, this is uh, the old, uh, old photo camera with the, with the film. Uh, the gamma uh, snapshot presents uh, a contour, uh, uh, presents heavy, heavy elements, but neutrons can show uh, organic structure like, like film. So mil, film is, uh, is made of, uh, of uh, organic po polymers. Uh, another example is the Buddha stature. Uh, in X-rays, uh, you can see just, just a counter, uh, but uh, neutrons uh, show something organic, uh, saint relics probably inside the stature. This method is also used in uh, paleontological studies. You can see the organic structure of of the petrified pine cone. Uh, lithium batteries are widely used, you know, in smartphones, electromobiles, in many, many other applications. And you know that a brand new smartphone can operate for a day or two, but in a couple of years, uh, you need it to recharge almost twice a day. And the reason for the, for the battery capacity decrease is various defects uh, that accumulate in, in the structure of the electrodes uh, during uh, charge discharge uh, processes. So um, neutrons are an excellent tool to, to study and probe uh, these structural defects, even, uh, even in walking battery. It is possible to analyze changes in the crystal structure directly during the charge discharge process. And detecting possible defects, we can provide feedback for the battery producers to, to help develop uh, battery technologies. Uh, so you know that uh, NASA sent a rover on Mars, the Curiosity rover. And on this uh, rover, there is a source of fast neutrons. It's a radio, a radio isotope source. And the neutron detector done, uh, created with the participation of GNR. This detector can detect uh, thermal neutrons, uh, and the uh, fast neutron having the mass almost equal to the mass of, of a proton, which is in which is uh, hydrogen uh, in, in a hydrogen atom. So proton is a nucle nucleus of, of a hydrogen, is effectively effectively slowed down on hydrogen. And uh, these neutrons uh, experience many collisions and uh, Brownian motion, and even can go back, like uh, shown here. Two, by measuring the thermal neutrons emitted from the surface of, of Mars, it is possible to detect the presence of areas with uh, an increased uh, concentration of hydrogen and hence water and ice. Okay, neutrons allow distinguishing uh, matter composition. Here we use the deuterium tritium reaction. Maybe I just run this video. Uh, deuterium tritium reaction to produce fast neutrons. So we spill tritium ions on the uh, deuterium ions on tritium uh, target. Uh, and hence produce fast, fast neutrons. By hitting a nucleus, neutron can excite it and uh, it will emit gamma quantum with a specific energy. By measuring the gamma quanta spectrum and uh, processing it, we can determine what nuclear are excited. For instance, uh, drugs, explosives, and uh, money paint are very active because of nitrogen in their composition. And by detecting uh, nitrogen in the spectrum, we can consider the scanned object as uh, suspicious. This technique uh, can be used for <coughs> diamond searching in, 
uh, in the rock uh, by uh, non-destructive uh, method. By detecting carbon in, in the rock composition, you know that the price of diamond depends on its size and it is not, it is not linear. Uh, by detecting carbon, we can take uh, this piece of rock aside and break it apart gently. Okay, a proton is, is another well-known particle that we use in applications. We use them to, to treat people. Uh, compared to, to other particles like uh, so neutrons, uh, gamma rays, or electrons, protons have has uh, protons uh, have uh, a dose maximum in the depth. Uh, this is so-called Bragg peak. It means that the dose can be uh, delivered uh, inside an organ where a cancer tumor is located with the minimal damage, of, uh, uh, damage to surrounding tissue. To minimize injury of normal tissues, uh, the radiation course is split by many days and the patient is exposed from different directions. Since the tumor has a complex shape, the proton beam is uh, form, uh, formed to match uh, the tumor by means of uh, collimators and uh, proton moderators, which uh, can slow down protons uh, with a complex shape. In our institute, we have a quite old uh, proton accelerator, uh, Facetron, which was built for physical research in 1949. And later on, it was used uh, to develop uh, proton therapy. Up to now, uh, almost 1,200 patients uh, have been treated. And uh, now together with a Belgian company, IBA, our institute developed and produced a specialized uh, cyclotron for medical treatment. And now a specialized uh, medical center in uh, Dimitrovgrad, it's another city in Russia, <laughs> is in operation and uh, treating people. Okay, uh, just, just briefly mention some astrobiological research. So we have the electron microscope, which was commissioned in the astrobiology sector. Our scientists obtain samples of uh, meteorites, Orge and uh, Murchis Murchison, and detected interesting fossils, which were identified as possible traces of life. Um, these guys are very excited, excited and uh, going to make a press release of their discovery, but I would refrain from commenting on it and checking, checking this out a uh, hundred times before press release. Okay, uh, so our experiments detectors generate petabytes of data uh, that should be stored and analyzed. Uh, we have a specialized laboratory of information technologies, which provides a powerful computer cluster and uh, supports, uh, supports it. Um, all the results uh, and outcomes of our studies have to be systematized, uh, systematized and described. We have the largest uh, laboratory of theoretical physics in the world. Uh, they develop uh, new theories and uh, adjust uh, current uh, theories and, and provide theoretical support of uh, our home, home experiments, NICA, super heavy elements, neutrino physics, and, and many other. Of course, uh, our institute uh, has has, has a broad educational program. As for general employees, as for students, and uh, even for physics teachers, I would like to draw your attention uh, to the remote educational program for, uh, for students, interest, which is actual for the, for the current pan pandemic situation uh, with the support of the university center I have the honor to speak uh, to you today. 
Uh, of course, in spite of our main activities, which are curious indeed, uh, we, have, we have a lot of fun in our lab. Here are just a couple of uh, examples uh, with a phosphorescent uh, screen or uh, a levitation over a semiconductor. <laughs> and we also have many, many other sort of fun and entertainment. Okay. And that's uh, more, more or less it. Here are some useful links and uh, links to a social media for you if you want to, uh, would you, if you uh, would like to learn more about Jenner and uh, our studies and activities. Thank you. That's it. This has been excellent. Uh, thank you very much. And now, and now we have some time for questions. So anyone who has questions, please add them into the chat. We'll hopefully get uh, through most of them. I might group some together if there end up uh, being a lot of ones. I know I have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask myself as well if we get time. Uh, but let's start off with two that were asked uh, during this session from Efe in Turkey. Uh, so one is about the theoretical uh, value for gluon mass is zero. So why does the strong nuclear force have a range? Uh, uh, maybe I did not get it right. So uh, if it must uh, zero, why it can handle a strong force? Yeah, like what, why, does it, um, why does it act through a range or why does it have a specific range? Oh. Like it's like, it's not like the gravitation or right, the right, electromagnetic right, right. force. It has a range. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, one. so it's very uh, complex question indeed. So for, for a school student, uh, it's because of, um, of uh, the special quantum uh, numbers, uh, which are colors. And this is described by a very complex theory of um, um, quantum chromodynamics. So I cannot describe it in, in a few words, but this is very, very complex indeed. But can you at least say it, say that what is color? <laughs> uh, so it's not, it's not an actual color, what we can see. It's yeah. a special, it's a special, um, specific uh, quantum number, which was uh, uh, put into a theory to, um, to resolve uh, Pauli violations. Uh, so we, we discovered uh, some particles which have almost uh, the same spin of three, the same uh, quarks inside it, like some, some sort of hyper, hyperons or other, other particles. Uh, because I'm specialized in, in another field, so it's really hard to, uh, to come up <laughs> what, what, what was the story of it. But uh, as far as I remember, there are some exotic particles that can have uh, three uh, quarks uh, in the same spin state. And to resolve this uh, violation, it should be violate, uh, violated by, by Pauli. And uh, then people realized that uh, uh, we need to put another uh, quantum uh, number which, uh, to, to, to resolve this issue, which, which, is, which is color. I don't know how to, how to explain it in simple thing. Uh, but like, as I understood it, it is because of Pauli exclusion principle, right? Yes, right, uh, right, right. This to... to um, to explain this violation of Pauli, Pauli principle. And uh, now we know that the gluons also have uh, such, uh, such a number. And then uh, the, the force which is uh, given by uh, gluons is rather, rather complicated than uh, for particles like uh, photons or uh, gravitons, as you mentioned. So, and here this additional um, additional property of this for forces is, is coming uh, coming up, so some, something like that. 
in, in simple words. I'm, I'm not really good in, uh, good in this theory of quantum chromodynamics, but this is very, very complex uh, question indeed. Thank you, thank you for it. Thank you okay. so much. And, and then uh, ju just to check, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was answered in that discussion, but during that discussion, there was another question in the chat, just to confirm, uh, so colors are invented because of the poly exclusion principle, right? Right. Perfect. And then uh, there's actually another one from earlier from FA as well. Uh, do neutrinos have a lifespan? Uh, so they, they're stable particles. So like in, in indefinite lifespan kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> Infinite. Um, and if if anyone else has other questions, please feel free to add them. Uh, I have two that I kind of want to ask. One was you were mentioning um, the neutrino program collaborating with other neutrino centers. Mm -hmm. And I noticed Super K in Japan wasn't one of them, um, but it's known as like one of the biggest uh, uh, neutrino programs in the world. Is there that's, any reason- That's correct. I, I missed it in my, my list. So we are collaborating with uh, uh, Japan uh, for T2K. So we do collaborate with uh, Japanese on T2K experiment and uh, for future experiment Hyper-K. So maybe I was not, not clear. Oh, I, excellent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> th 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 thank you. Uh, and, and an, another question that I had when I was watching the animation for the pulsed reactor on fast mm -hmm. neutrons, then the, the reflective mirrors, there, were, there was one with one slit and one that appeared to have two slits. Right. And I, I was wondering both why that is and wouldn't that give rise to two pulses or two beams that would happen in short succession after each other? So uh, if you look, let's, let's look it one more time to see for uh, this, this slits. Okay, so it's here and I can just, okay. So, so you can see how do they overlap at the, at the top point. You see, so uh, uh, these two slits and one slit uh, just overlap. Uh, so it's just it's, it's just to make at the at the top point at the topmost point uh, the uh, fully reflectional area without slits. So of course you can you can manage it in, in a way that you can make a slit at one uh, reflector and uh, one slit on another and also overlap them. But uh, maybe it's more reasonable design for somehow. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know uh, actually. But uh, but the idea is just to uh, to to fully overlap and make a hundred percent reflective area. Okay, th thank you. Thank and you. once they go down, uh, they just open open active zone and uh, neutrons can go out. And chain reaction stops. Uh, excellent, thank you. Uh, and we, we probably have time for one or two more questions. Uh, we have one more from Effie in the chat. What is the energy level of neutrons in this experiment? Uh, how many electron volts? Uh, how many, uh, can, can you repeat that please? Oh, uh, how many electron volts? Uh, like for the, the energy. Of, of these neutrons? Yeah. Uh, it's, at, uh, it's, it's fast neutrons, as mentioned in, in the name of, of this past reactor. So it's at level of MEBs, uh, mega electron volts. Excellent, thank you. Are, are there any more questions before we conclude? Okay, and it, 
And it looks like we're out of questions. Um, so I, I, I wanna thank you again for this excellent introduction uh, and to encourage participants to come to some of the upcoming lectures. There's, there's a couple of great ones lined up from JNR coming up in the next month or two as well. Uh, so just to mention those ones coming up and mention some of the others. Um, so one of the things you mentioned was the super heavy elements and there's gonna be a whole lecture focused on those on, mm -hmm. March 15th coming up. Uh, also neutrinos are one, one of the big things you mentioned in a big specialty. There's a lecture on those coming up on March 22nd. Uh, and then one on the, the data center, the computing, why do we need so many computers coming up on April 26th. Uh, there's also a number of virtual visits uh, coming up a, at CERN throughout March. Uh, I'll send out a schedule with all of those and uh, virtual visits uh, from the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research where I'll actually travel there in person to get to take part in them as well and share them with everyone. Uh, those are coming up in May. And just a couple of things coming up later this month, actually just confirmed today and still slightly tentative. There's gonna be a virtual visit of the Atlas detector at CERN on Friday the 25th of February and a science show uh, on phase changes. It's just a phase from the CERN School Lab on March 2nd. Uh, all of that will be sent out by email to anyone who's signed up to receive more information on the upcoming virtual camps. Um, so you'll get all of that information. But uh, I know for me, this has been a great uh, welcome and introduction to the excellent work going on at the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. So I hope everyone's interested in having some more details on the great stuff going up there on there over the next uh, several sessions we'll be having. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope you will also uh, invite some theoreticians uh, to explain why gluons have such a short <laughs> force. I, I, I'm going to make a note to, knows, to look for much, much better than I. <laughs> So I'm going to look for someone to explain that, but if, uh, if you have any recommendations for uh, someone I should get in touch with to give a talk on that, please let me know and I'd, I'd be happy to invite them as well. Sure. So we have a lot of theoreticians here. So maybe someone of those people can, can present something. Uh, excellent, that, that'd be great. And if, uh, if, uh, if there's anyone you can recommend in particular, or I'm sure Olga will know someone or like Olga and someone at the university center has been coordinating everything. Uh, they're always happy to help. Sure, I will, I will talk to Olga in, in order to figure out who can help with it. Uh, excellent, that sounds great. So um, thank you again, and thank you to everyone for, for coming along and participating. Uh, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.